on. Does I okay? So um, from this week, we can could um, uh, take uh, have a little um, ramp up the speed. Also, um, we're going to start individual assignments uh, from from this week. Remember, I'm not a one of those lecturers that want to see um, parrot style. So your assignments can really interpret um, your worldview, how you see it, but always to incorporate um, uh, the learning. Because for me, that's not a transcript that um, everybody must have the same answers. It's really how do you see what, what we introduce to you through your worldview, whether you uh, are from e Egypt and you stay in Canada, um, or whether you are from one place and you work um, in another place, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an, um, an entrepreneur, um, that is where I want to see the richness of, of your own experiences. Um, so also um, from tomorrow, I'm going to sit and um, start marking, giving comments back. Um, that's what I've put the next few days aside to just go to week one, week two, and anybody who needs support from week three onwards um, to have one-on-ones with you um, as well. Okay, so today we're going to look at uh, the, uh, managing external relations in terms um, of uh, small business. However, if you don't have a small business, then see it in terms of whatever framework is going to work for you, whether you know somebody who has a small business or whether you um, are managing external relations from the job where you are sitting in um, at, at this stage. Um, let me quickly, okay. So the environment, um, I want to share with you something in terms of the environment. Um, after I've given you the definition from this book, so they say the environment is if all the forces outside your company um, or of the entrepreneur. Um, why that word is such an interesting word is in 2015 and 16, I went to Oxford and I trained under, you guys can Google it, Donna Zawar. Um, so she um, is also placed in the Hall of Fame this year through the work of quantum management and quantum leadership. So I went to train um, with her as, uh, I'm the only one she's certified in the world so far, um, of uh, quant uh, so spiritual intelligence in business and um, so it's not spiritual from the sake of, but spiritual intelligence, uh, like you get EQ, but spiritual intelligence in terms of sustainable business and in quantum leadership. So in that same year, I had 11 month contract um, as a consultant um, with um, Wits Business School, which is made up of 37 heads of schools. So chemist, um, let's say chemistry, accounting, all those of counting as a school and then there's a head of school over each one. So there was 37 of them and then they added 13 other um, executives um, across the university to make up a group of 50. So this word, all of the forces outside, <laughs> gave uh, me a really different perspective um, one specific day. The reason why is we did a, a session on quantum leadership and it's all the professors. Now these are not general, normal professors. These are professors that are heads of schools and then they have lots of staff um, under them. So we gave them an ex, um, exercise to say, okay, should they go out to a school in a rural area where children don't have computers, but they need to teach them computer literacy. They must then um, develop a small curriculum. Um, and at the end of the session, they, uh, the children need to have certain outcomes. So then we gave each group a box. And in the box, we put a little, uh, item, a few items in. So it was fascinating to see as we gave them the uh, assignment, they opened their box. These professors looked at this box um, like, 
you could see in the uh, over the faces that I said, uh, they were thinking like, what the heck must we do with this box? So what they've oh. missed, what they've missed, somebody's mic, John, welcome. I just want to put your mic off. So what they've missed in the instruction is so, uh, um, to enable the lesson in this rural area in terms of literacy, they can use anything in the environment. So all what they focused on is what is the environment in this box. But their mindsets were so narrow that they could not see that the environment actually includes everything outside the box. So why I'm telling you, they had to realize that, was, uh, that day that despite being professors, heads of one of um, the, the, the best universities in South Africa, and that university is also um, going global and also in Africa, they could not see, the, they could not see um, or hear the word in their environment. So when we illustrated that, they realized that they, their own mindsets are very boxed, despite them being professors who's teaching others. So this is also whether you are in a corporate as an inter entrepreneur, whether you are in a bi small business as a, or a bigger business as an entrepreneur. It is in this world where we live, and last week we spoke about the, uh, the VUCA world, is if you're not going to be um, flexible and super flexible and adapt, uh, uh, adapt um, in terms of the, the challenges, the complexity um, of the external environment around your business, whether corporate or small business, you may not make it or may not be sustainable. So that's very important that it's a small word to say all your, your environment, everything outside of you, but you can make it or you can not make it in business if you are not very attuned to your um, and adapted, adaptable to your external environment. Okay, now your environment and how you see your environment is also a, a key element in terms of your organizational identity and um, its organizational culture. Okay, all of you are in business um, and the majority of you are in corporates. So each of your organization has an organizational identity and organizational culture. So when you see any of the assignments or any of the learning, Step, to make it easier from you, do it from the perspective of what is your organizational identity, whether big or small, and what is the organizational culture to which you contribute to form, um, to influence the external um, or internal environment. Okay. Now, the... Um, I'm going to go to the second slide and I'll quickly show you why, and we're going to stand still on that. Why I haven't touched on this slide here on the Brie model is I have brought in two other slides for you. We touched on it um, the previous week, but I've brought in two other slides for you the way we're going to work on the Brie model. So what I want you to do is as we go through, make notes. Because on um, your assignment this week, you're going to work on some of these slides. So on each slide, I will say, okay, this you need to bring into your individual assignment. Um, can you see in front of you assignments for week three? Yes. Professor, yes. we can see the screen. I can't see the screen for myself. If you are sharing something, I also don't see. You don't see. So, what are you seeing? Just tell me, what do you see? Just the team's view in which the participants exist. I can, see assignment for week three. 
Let me just just check with Mpilo. Hmm? No, but it's a scene. Can you see the screen? Yes, Noron, yes. I can see. Noron, we can oh. see it. So just yes. look out and look in again, Noron. Try it. I, I also don't see it, so <laughs> I will also do the same. Right, to log out and log in again because it's, uh, it's I can seen. unshare okay. and then share again. Then you guys log in and out. Um, so I'm also will unshare and share again to see if that will make a change because um, it's strange that some can see and some can't see. Okay, so let's check with Olena quickly. Olena? Uh, yes, unfortunately, I still don't see the screen. Can you see the slide now? Assignments for week three. No. Okay, let me unshare and then I share again. What do you see on my screen uh, now? I First, I couldn't see it, but now I can see it. Now I don't see it. Okay, <laughs> okay let me try again. Now we okay. see your face. Uh, I hope you, uh, you see my And then smile. the assignment <laughs> for week three, yes. Can, can you see? So, uh, yes, okay. so I recommend, I recommend yes, people I to log out and log in again. Okay, can you see now? Yes, I finally see. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for alerting me to that. So what we're going to, you're going to do this week is every week there will be a, a quiz, but those things take very, um, it's very short. And then there's um, the, the end of model questions, um, just to test your understanding on certain things um, on, the, um, on, on the screen. And please remember, I am not um, overly strict. If I can see you uh, get the gist of it, um, uh, for me, it is not, I never believed in a parrot style where you need to go and put things exactly as in the theory. Um, for me, it is more about um, how, how do you develop uh, a new way of thinking outside of the box. As long as I can identify the, 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 the basic of the, the theory and the rest is your interpretation, um, that, is, um, that is also, um, uh, also good. So then the third one is um, because we're not going to uh, have the forum thing again. Um, so what I, I want us to start looking. So I'm going to take you as we go through, you're going to make notes. So in this one, um, you need to take on the, the position as a consultant um, to, um, to a small business. Um, and if you've um, never, none of you have ever been a consultant, I think, except uh, Lazat, is to say, what would you, even if it's your um, a friend's business, what would you have recognized, uh, recommended um, to that business? So in this one is, um, is uh, use, the first thing is the pre model. I've put this slide number three. There are four things that you will look at there, boundary, resources, intentions and exchange, but I'm going to make it easy for you, is I'll say this slide and that slide. So use the by using the BRI model, how can you recommend to the entrepreneur then um, to also apply the principle of bootstrapping in the, the environment? We're going to look at it now. That is slide four, okay? Um, the purpose, the, uh, the one purpose is so that they be, uh, uh, develop um, legit uh, legitimacy because the entrepreneur without legitimacy will not get to the point of um, of true sustainability. So there are three uh, legitimacy indicators which I've said to um, slides ten to thirteen. Then what is very important is to say how would that help them to to make the right ethical decision? Okay. Um, and then you must align everything with uh, um, the sustainable United Nations Sustainable Development Goals of uh, not 2023, it's 2030, to ensure um, that they can get to, sust um, to sustainability um, for their, their business. Okay. Um, you can take it from the perspective of um, your, your company. 
uh, or your country where you are in, because that will also bring a difference between um, between uh, all the, the, the answers. What is important is I've attached a PDF um, of a report that was presented to the United Nations at the end of 2022. Um, so take that context so it's a little bit like puzzle building and said i'm taking um four elements of the pre model i'm taking um this uh, element of the the bootstrap model i'm taking um the these um learnings on in terms of uh, ethical decision to do the right thing and then how do you lump it together uh, in terms of um the the um, 2030 sustainable development goals now you don't have to use all the goals. You can choose, let's say, which three goals you want to, um, it's closest to your heart. Um, and that uh, is going to be the easiest for, uh, for you. Um, and then make, uh, at the end, a, um, a recommendation um, um, to a small business to say, okay, by using this, is this is how it will benefit your business. And if you don't do that, that is how it's going to disadvantage your business. Okay, You can really um, limit that to, let's say, uh, five benefits and five disadvantages. Okay, so it's it's not a difficult thing. All what you need is puzzle building. Take the pre. Okay, yes, I understand the pre. Take the bootstrapping. Yes, I understand um, how bootstrapping can be practically used. You take the the legitimacy. Okay, so now how do I bring the pre and the bootstrapping within uh, as a feeder into the the legitimacy? Um, and you can create this, a scenario um, to say, let's say corruption. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you and your countries have uh, uh, corruption, but <laughs> we do. Um, to say, okay, so, um, let's say your entrepreneur uh, cannot get access to business unless they um, uh, need to pay somebody somewhere um, if, uh, something to get the business. Um, or you can use any scenario. You just need to create a scenario uh, as a problem from the, the entrepreneur. Okay, so I will reword it quickly afterwards before Mbilo um, upload that. Um, we're going to come back to this um, uh, before we end so that um, you have an idea. But as you go through, I'm going to say, okay, this slide, this slide, this slide, and then you plug and play. Okay. Any questions or comments before we go uh, um, dive into to, 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 to the work? then I'm going to um, go on. So the first one is I've brought this in for you. So these slides are not the exact slides. I'm teaching you guys a little um, just deeper value. Otherwise, it's difficult to, to work on slides where there's just words, but not practical application. So this is the first concept that you will use in your, um, your um, case study. And that case study you create in for yourself as a problem that you um, know entrepreneur have or that you in your business have and you just say you're doing this as an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur okay uh, either inside a big business or um, external entrepreneur with a small business okay so last week we've touched on pre-model but i've brought in here as a refresher so the pre-model um go uh, um the uh, these four elements is the one is the it's on the top the boundary um, and that is to um, create a place for your business in terms of location and um, people's minds so if um, last week we had a discussion in terms of culture so let's say somebody's uh, wife who's in Egypt they need to bring extra income. And that um, the, the, the wife now started uh, making um, food to sell to pay school fees and to contribute to help the family. That is already entrepreneurship. Uh, whether that is um, a, a registered business or just as a sole proprietor, um, that is already um, uh, a form of, of entrepreneurship. So that is so then for, for let's say for um, 
th that mum or that wife is what is the place um, where um, in terms of um, location and in people's mind to say, okay, I'm going to go to Nuran um, if I want to get the best, um, let's say, kebabs or the best uh, this. I know uh, Nuran is the queen of Nuran. I'm just using it as an example. Is the uh, best queen of kebabs uh, in this um, specific in environment. So she already has a place in people's minds. The second element is resources. That includes the money, the product um, uh, and knowledge. It also includes the, the financial resources um, uh, the, uh, and also uh, can you run to it on her own or ne does she need somebody to go and deliver this or does she need other um, uh, human resources? Okay. Then the third element in the pre model is, um, is, the, uh, is about intention. Why did the person start the business? Is it from necessity or is it from passion? Necessity can become passion or um, necessity and passion can go to, to, um, together um, as well. Um, to say, what is the intention, the reason why, um, let's say, Nuran has started that business? Then the fourth uh, element is exchange is how do you, uh, it's moving the, the, the resources, the products, the services to ex an exchange for money. So let's say um, Nuran as um, um, she makes as an extra income after work, certain whether it's clothes or food, that is how does she move it to those with, which falls into her boundary from point A to point B so that she can get uh, income in. Another person can um, not do a product, but they can do a service. Um, they can maybe, like a, the assignment, is you're going to be a consultant. So you need to um, move your advice, your, your recommendations, your support from point A where you are to point B where the entrepreneur is so that you can get um, money in exchange for that. So that is the first portion of the assignment. It is how do you use or acknowledge um, the pre-model in your case study? Any questions or comments before I go on to the next one? Okay, so, oh, and by the way, we will have a, a break on the dot um, four o'clock. Okay, then the next one is, remember, that's the second part of your assignment is the, um, the bootstrapping uh, uh, method. Okay, so what is what is bootstrapping? They I've put some, um, just a picture in there for you with a highlighter to say that is a, when you um, a start a business from scratch and you're building it up with minimum outside investment. The majority of small businesses um, start like that. So I can give my own example, and um, I would love also to later on in a discussion to bring your own um, experience as well. So I've been uh, um, a consultant for many years. So this is the first time since February, March last year that I actually got employees. Um, like Mpilo is working with me, um, and so I've. After in my business, because I'm a subject matter expert in what I've done, I don't really have the need for, for employees. I worked with associates. But now when you scale to the next level, then you say, okay, I can't do it um, alone and I can't do it only with associates. So um, I need, um, a, a, let's say, an employee as an uh, employee or two um, as, a, um, as an example. Okay. Other uh, examples of, of uh, bootstrapping is um, when you buy used um, equipment versus new e equipment. Um, that's one form of, of bootstrapping. Let's say you, uh, another example is instead of buying, let's say, a computer, you can lease a computer or a printer. That's another form of, of, of bootstrapping. Um, 
Uh, third one is how do I get, uh, instead of me as an entrepreneur or you as an entrepreneur, uh, paying for certain things, how do you do that? Now, um, you, if you're a nonprofit, you can do it with, let's say, with grants. Or if you're in a business, you can get an investor that pay for certain things. In South Africa, we have a legislation called Triple BEE, and I'll just put it for you in the chat. Uh, yeah, which stands for Broad Based Black Economic Empowerment. Okay, so um, you and your country may have different um, forms of legislation. So in our case is um, there's a lot of um, a companies must pay 2% of the net cut, which is the net profit of the tax. Let me just put it in here. 2% of the net profit of the tax must go towards the development of the suppliers and 1% of the net profit of the tax must go to the development of entrepreneurs that are not yet their suppliers. So this is a different form of funding, even if the example here is obtaining grants, um, because grants um, are also, in our case, um, an element under this legislation. Another um, example is minimizing personal expenses so that you don't um, bleed your business dry by uh, through your personal uh, lifestyle. Is to say the business income uh, and expenses are for the business, and you get a fee, let's say, for <laughs> um, your uh, your services, and you live from that. But from experience, is um, what what happened. I found is a lot of uh, startups plus uh, entrepreneurs in the first one or two years um, don't know how to separate their personal uh, expense or their personal lifestyle versus the business ex uh, uh, life uh, the business uh, and then the business gets income and the person lives uh, uh, on that. So that is something that that I found uh, happens a lot. Then another form is the another example is the fourth one is um, we're also part of minimizing costs is that either you can work from home or you can um, share an office space, a co-worker office space with some uh, someone because in that way you get the, um, the legitimacy of you have a formal office the, uh, and um, you still can save uh, on expenses. Um, I don't know about your countries, but in South Africa, after COVID, a lot of entrepreneurs um, actually have realized that if they had the office spaces, they would have paid it, but they would have never been there. So um, because so many of us had to work from home, a lot of the corporates also are changing their policies that staff only have to go in, let's say, once or twice in a week um, to do the corporate and the rest they can work from, um, from home. So here's it differs from company to, to company, but um, I can see there's a, a huge shift where previously if you worked from home, they would say, ha! Oh, you're not credible. We're now, it is such a natural thing that um, nobody even asks, or rather asks, so why don't you work from home? Um, rather than spending your money uh, on rental space. Then um, on the right hand side, the second uh, block is uh, obtaining payments in advance from, um, from customers. So um, I can also see that the government with us doesn't do it, but there are um, um, a change in terms of where, let's, especially in consulting, where persons say, um, okay, I can do the work for you, but you need to put a deposit um, a deposit down. Um, but that also differs from company to, to company. Then the last, uh, second last one is um, instead of duplicating I, let's say I buy, um, um, okay, I'll give you a good example. Instead of um, 
we had a very, I attended an amazing, amazing session a few years ago with McKinsey, KPMG. Um, there was another consulting firm in South Africa. Then it was um, with us, the Department of Trade and Industry, the Mining Chamber, um, Ford. Um, um, there was a few mines and it's really Anglical to Shanti, so it's quite international, big mines. And they came together to, uh, and the Competition Commission was also there, so that they don't see us colluding. But the case study was there, and that's the, a fascinating case study that the, the guy from um, Brazil's uh, McKinsey came to, to introduce to us. And instead of all of them on buying from Caterpillar, these big vehicles, we call it CAT, but it's um, Caterpillar, they all um, uh, are buying high prices when they secure from, from Caterpillar. So they wanted to see if they could um, buy certain things together. Um, can't they negotiate um, better prices with Caterpillar? But then how can the Competition Commission approve that so that they don't get fined for, um, for, for, for overstepping certain rules of the comp uh, Competition Commission? So the example that Kat, um, through this guy, at, through this consultant at McKinsey came and said what they did in Brazil was they identified um, uh, in their category management, in their supply chain, they identified that um, on their purchase, uh, purchasing from Caterpillar, there are things that's in under guarantee, which they can't touch, uh, but then there's a lot of money that also spent from things that, um, let me just, that they are, are buying from CAT, but it's not under guarantee. So they made, um, they made an analysis to say, what is the category spent under to CAT in terms of those things spent um, under guarantee? And what are the categories spent to Caterpillar um, on those things not under guarantee? Then what they did is they said, okay, it's still a substantial amount um, that they spent to get for the things under uh, not under guarantee, but then they um, uh, got approval from the um, government there that they can um, start using localization for the things. So let's say the, the mirror uh, broke or this thing broke, th uh, repair and maintenance to the Caterpillar equipment that is not under guarantee. So then they aligned it with their localization um, uh, strategy. And what is the impact to that huge cost savings over and above um, stimulating um, local entrepreneurship? So that is a form of coordinating uh, purchases with other businesses to align with, let's say, localization strategy um, as a boost to local entrepreneurship. Then the last one is absolutely a lean approach to cost management so that um, there is um, not um, wasteful expenditure. Um, so these are some forms and examples of bootstrapping. Any questions um, or comments on this? If you have a specific category uh, or example in your company or in your uh, country, please share these things so that we all can learn from each other. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? Nothing. Okay. So then the next one is, um, this is just um, a slide explaining Okay, from the circle at the outside is this um, a difference? If you look at the top of that circle, can you see the words general environment? Can you see that? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can see. Yes. Okay. So this is important just to distinguish. Thank you so much um, for that. Eh? Um, this is a, in, a, where you need to distinguish between what is your scene in, in entrepreneurship uh, or in business as your general environment versus your task environment. 
And um, you, if I've looked at the questions, that the, the one of the um, uh, things they're definitely going to um, ask is um, so that you know what's the differences between general environment and task environment. So let's look at the big outside circle of general environment. This is where that looks um, on which it's a sectorial focus. So um, are your organization falling into which sector? Or um, the entrepreneur, which sector are they falling in? So that's described as the general environment. Whether it is, um, which ones impact you? Is it the economic sector? Is it the international sector? Is it the political legal sec sector? Is it the, um, um, the uh, referred as the demographic sector? Is the ecosystem um, infrastructure or infrastructure? What is the influence of the social cultural sector um, in terms on your organization and the technological sector? Now, in the world we live, your business may be influenced by a combination of those sectors. So let's quickly check, just check in, who wants to share which sector uh, their organization um, are the biggest, the, uh, let's say the, uh, the primary and the sec uh, secondary general environments which have the, uh, have the biggest impact or influence in your uh, organization. Who wants to, to share with us? Matar, thank you. Yes. So uh, I have a small business that I'm running it right now with myself mm -hmm. that is growing up small uh, chicken for okay. a period of time, then selling it to the consumer. Okay. okay? And this is a very small uh, business for me but uh, it is affected for sure by a lot of the uh, uh, general environment or or i mean the external factors here like uh, like the international sector it it affected mm -hmm. it a lot also it is a small one but after the ukrainian the russian ukrainian war everything uh, raised all the prices were raised in a way that uh, the the price for one uh, cycle of this of growing up this small chicken was almost tripled so the price oh, was a okay. little bit too much high so i was very much affected by this one and even many people they uh, stopped doing such small businesses because the price of the end product at last is is going very high and that is why the consumers themselves instead of buying for example 10 per month they will prefer to buy five that's an okay. example okay Beautiful. but yes so this is an example for such international sector yes but it it was affecting this small very small project that i'm running okay Okay. And Matar, if I may ask, because normally what happens is um, you, uh, if I can put my hand like here, as you as the, the, the entrepreneur, um, your cost, like you said, your costs go up like triple, but sometimes you necessarily can't take that triple increase and um, um, uh, let the client, uh, the customer absorbs that. So, um, will, will you be able to absorb a, um, a a big portion of the increase of the triple into your prices, or or not? Because that's what I assume that people then contact ten chickens, but they can take let's say five chickens because your price also should have gone up, but not to uh, normally to the extent to absorb a triple uh, input uh, um, a pricing to to your costs. Okay, I will tell you what I'm doing because I, I focus on the consumers who mm -hmm. are looking for quality products, not looking for the price itself. So uh, uh, when I raised the price for the chicken, the end product at last, okay, I my target customers were the people who are always looking for the, the quality, not the oh, price. Okay. 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 And that is okay. why, and they they are a little bit uh, uh, rich enough, uh, so that yes, they will be for higher values, for higher prices of the end product of the chicken, because they are looking for quality and they need to 
to to and they have the ability to buy and they have as well the willing to buy uh, quality products so if okay. if if other uh, uh, entrepreneurs were looking only for prices and yeah. the end the product will is is only a, 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 I, I mean they are competing with the prices only not other edges like quality or whatever so they were very much affected in my case yes a little bit i had to stop a little bit because uh, the fund itself for running one period or one cycle of this uh, product it's about mm -hmm. 35 days but it it was just up for three times so i had to think a little bit about how if i am going to do will people will buy it or not and uh, i had st i stopped for two three months until i took the mm -hmm. decision OK, and the, but I still found that people are still looking for the end product from my side, and that is why I said, OK, let me invest more. So I will pay mm -hmm. more to cover the extra the extra money uh, mm -hmm. needed for one cycle. But at last mm -hmm. I will find some people who are looking for the end product, so it will not make any loss for me. Beautiful. Congratulations with that. Eh? That's you. very impressive. Oli, can you come on the screen? <laughs> Um, you have a non-profit. Ali, are you there? Ali is not there. Does anyone else want to, to share bef uh, before I go on, on this? Thank you so much, Amadar. That's really, really um, uh, insightful. Eh? Does anyone else want to share? Not. OK, so then um, what what entrepreneurs also must uh, take into account is the, the inner environment. So um, in terms of that is um, uh, or before you can get to that is the task uh, um, uh, environment. And that is where uh, things like unions um, will also influence um, and, and that will depend the context from country to country to say what is your task environment so in our case is uh, it will be let's say our also part of that is the the legislative uh, uh, environment then what in entrepreneurs uh, also need to consider is the third circle and that's the internal uh, environment um, that will in include groupings like you see there's the green one is your public environment that includes let's say nonprofits, interest groups um, um, the, the the media as an overlap it will uh, include your business community um, and it will also include your entrepreneurial um, ecosystem so for example um I want to give an example of uh, on the ecosystem. We have uh, one amazing, amazing entrepreneur that we are developing. Her name is CD. And her company's name is Garments of Rare Distinction. Um, so what she does is, um, is she go to, um, you know, in our country, people buy a mealy meal. Um, to make porridge from. So one for uh, example is let's say um, the, the, the branding on the back with it's the milli meal inside to make porridge is let's say from the brand Evisa. So she can get those um, um, bags that people uh, throw away and she makes it from, re uh, from recycle. She makes the most beautiful handbags or chips, you know, knick, uh, knick knacks, or um, I don't know what's the, the international brands, but the chips, the, the Lay's, the Simba's, or the, the chips that, that you eat, the, the crisps, um, the dried crisps, crisps. So she take all the bags that people throw away once they've eaten the chips, they clean it, they cut it, and they make the most beautiful um, um, pencil cases and uh, wallets and, and things. So we want to use that now to say what is the ecosystem and the value uh, chain from, uh, let's say Krista throw away a chips packet after she's completed that, how do we get more of those, um, um, uh, what people throw away? And then how can we in a community put like a production uh, system in place um, and then uh, export these because she exported to uh, Germany 
um, and also in one of the, the big malls in Cape Town called the Waterfront, they sell that um, the, 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 the products, but it's all made from recycled material. But the quality of that is just so amazing. So for me is um, in the world we live in is physically to start look, let your eyes start looking and say, what does other people throw away? <laughs> what can be recycled uh, into products? So that's also some of the products we um, are getting involved in, which for me is very, very excited. Ollie, if you can hear me, that is one thing that I would love to introduce you to CD because I believe that is something, even in case it's in, where you two can uh, also align. Another example is, you know, if you go to a convention, these uh, banners where you put your company details on. So what they do is people who don't want to use their banners anymore, they take those materials as offcuts. They cut it. She makes jackets, like designer jackets, and put it in there. Um, at one stage, we'll can give you pictures of that, but those are the things is what is in your environment that other people disregard that can fit into an ecosystem um, and empower a community, a can empower a family that can be recycled uh, into other products. So those are things that excites me a little in terms of the power of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Any questions or comments? Um, on the, um, the, the general or the task or the internal environment, um, like Matara has shared now. Anyone wants to share? Uh, I have a question, Professor. Uh, can you run? Can you hear me clear? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, my question is about uh, the multiple circuit, uh, circles at the union section. Yeah. Why they are separate and integrated in some regions and instead of being all elements in the union's circle? Because I don't understand the, the, the correlation between them, why they are okay. not um, included in one circle together. Okay. So the union fall, a very good question. Thank you, Naran. So the union falls under the task environment because um, the union uh, also in, um, influences how certain things, what they've been pushing to say, how they want certain things to, to happen for, let's say, some of the uh, members that are part of, um, of, of the union. Um, for uh, example, we in South Africa have quite um, a lot of uh, 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 unions, so they will um, have meetings and they would put pressure on government um, um, and they will put pressure on, uh, on businesses, how to influence certain things for a better um, environment, a better outcome for the members. So they're quite, quite influential um, in South Africa. I'm not sure in your own countries, but in uh, um, South Africa, unions um, have quite a lot of, of influence. If you look at the entrepreneurial, the internal environment, you'll see on the top, so a board of directors is part of the, the inner thing, uh, the inner uh, influence of the strategic um, um, uh, our organization um, should strategically take a stance on their, their way forward. So we fall under, like, you know, IFRS, and, but we also have um, uh, a King 4. We have um, a huge, huge legislation. So this is not a South African circle, but um, in terms of organizations, the board of directors normally need to uh, practice very good governance um, for um, the, 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 the health um, and the strategic way for entrepreneurs. If you take the overlaps, if you take the circle of, let's say, the internal environment and the public one, you'll see there's an overlap. So where they are overlapping, is to say, let's say the social networks, the, uh, the, the clients, customers are falling both in the task circle. That's why um, 
and in the environmental circle. So um, the f family and friends also fall both in the internal uh, environment and in the task environment. If you look at the circle below them, the overlap, the professional and trade associations, that one will both influence the internal uh, environment um, and the business community because that falls in that specific circle. If you look at the media one, um, that one falls both in an overlap between the public circle that falls under the task environment, but also it falls into the business um, uh, in a community that forms part of the task uh, environment. So these where there's overlaps, it's where they can't fall under uh, only task or they can't fall under only environment, uh, internal environment if they have an influence, an overlapping influence um, in both environments. So this is how they've designed this, um, this um, diagram to make it easier on the eye to see, okay, this one either falls fully in the task environment or it falls on an overlap between the various environments. Does that help a little, Nuran? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank I have a question. That. Yes, Matar? Matar. So when we say here, so and just to make it more easy for me to understand it, so we okay. have the internal environment, which is something inside the firm of the entrepreneur. That is something inside him because it includes the board of directors, owners, employees, and some other things that is related to inside. And we have yes. the task environment that could be something outside the this firm, but it's it is it still. Uh, 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 not related to the other uh, uh, big, I would say, uh, um, big uh, names like uh, economic sector or international sector or something like that, but it's something internal inside the company for as uh, a country, for example, or or both what's inside the task environment and the general environment are both that are the out outside the firm, but we are splitting according to the different categorization here. Beautiful. And also um, what what you have said also, this is everything on the outside, the general environment is influencing the task environment. So it's like an egg. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so that influenced the task environment and then the task environment influenced the internal environment. And then on, on those things between the task and environments, there are overlaps, but the general environment influenced directly um, the, the, the task environment. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, does that help? Beautiful thing for that summary. Anyone else you want to share or ask a question? Okay, so on the next one is, this is uh, basically what we've discussed now, is just to say, um, where does the general the internal uh, environment f uh, fall and fit into the, the um, uh, how does everything come together? So that's just a, a brief summary in terms of what we have discussed now. Okay, then the next one is, um, I've my highlighted for you in yellow so that it's easier on the eye. So the first one is um, it is important whether like Matar is doing um, um, a small um, a chicken um, uh, farming um, production uh, that is of cells or whether you in a, in a Siemens um, in, in a bigger company. It doesn't matter if you in an entrepreneurial uh, environment or entrepreneurial environment. It's each one will have a six type of at least six type of resources. The one is your physical resources. So what physical resources would Matar uh, need for his, um, his small business? What um, they call it social capital or what relation uh, relational in uh, um, uh, resources will he need um, for his business? What organizational resources? What financial resources? Um, 
Does it need um, um, intellectual or human resources? What will it be? And then what technological resources? So these are the basic um, six type of resources that any uh, uh, business, or in this case, small business um, will need. Okay. Now for each of them, a successful startup or a successful in, in, uh, entrepreneur um, knows what um, uh, each of uh, uh, types of resources uh, you will need. But then it's what do you have and what is it that you don't have? Those are the things is what do you have? How can you use that um, for the um, at its best in the entrepreneurial ecosystem? And what is it that you don't have? And how can you get that, even if it's on a phased approach as the business grow? So when we, um, and after this we'll make, take a break, when we develop entrepreneurs, the first thing in a mentoring session, when they say, because I can't do this and that, I don't have this, so I say to them, what do you have? Okay, let's see what is it, um, um, what is, what's in your hands? What are your, whether your gifts, your talents, your resources, what is it that you do have? Okay, are you using that to the optimum? Um, not, okay, so first let's fix that so that we, you use what you don't have, so that you don't focus more on what you don't have versus on using um, what you have to the maximum. And that applies to each of us. What is it that we have in, in terms of gifts and talents? Are we using what we have to the optimum? And if not, how can we use it to the optimum? And then we focus on what is it that we don't have? And then put a project plan in, pro, uh, approach plan in place to say, what are the most important things that we need from that what we don't have? Does this help? Yes? Everybody is very quiet. Are you still there? Yes, okay. yes, it helps a lot. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. So what we're going to do after the break, we're going to go into legitimacy, then um, we still have a lot to do. We're going to go into, so uh, I'm going to quickly take you through the legitimacy um, indicators. Then um, we're going to uh, work on sustainability. I brought things, I love the sustainability. And then um, I want to take you quickly into ethical decisions. So um, then we break for five minutes and then we're going to um, go on. Is five minutes okay? Let's make okay. it eight Okay, let's make it eight minutes on my watch. It's now 16.02. Let's start again on 16.10. Um, then if you have an eight minute break. Okay, I'll be back now. See you now.
Okay, are you ready? Are you all ready? Okay, thank you, Abulela. Thank you, Niran. Okay, so um, there are three things that I want to take you through before we end um, at five. The one is legitimacy. So um, um, the first thing under legitimacy, I have, let me just uh, put this on the slideshow. Oopsie, slideshow. Can you all see in front of you building legitimacy? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there's somebody I need to let in. Winnie. Welcome back, Winnie. So the one thing is, let's say we take um, um, Matar's uh, business now of the, of the chickens, okay? With his uh, high, high wealth, or if I can put it, uh, cli clients for that, is um, in their eyes, he may have the le legitimacy in terms of their opinion. Um, and uh, where he needs to buy certain, let's say, feed, for the um, for the chickens with those suppliers, um, he may uh, have legitimacy. Um, also, for example, let's say with his, some of his competitors, he must uh, they will say, "Yo, that guy is taking our, our business away." Um, so, in their eyes, they will have legitimacy. So, this is where the market decides whether the market is suppliers or whether the market um, uh, are, are your clients to say, is Matar's business, does he have the uh, appropriate legitimacy or not? Um, in our terms, let's say some of our suppliers don't know what they want to, that we develop, is they will come there and they have, they do everything from A to Z. And the first thing that we need to bring them back is to say, you cannot go to, 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 to market, let's say to a corporate, and you offer them from construction to uh, cleaning, to uh, services, to consultancy, to this. So um, my experience from certain corporates will say, Krista, we cannot uh, work with somebody, they call it the fly-by-night. Um, the, the term to say we cannot uh, work with somebody who has, doesn't have a focus area um, and don't know. It's like, Krista, tomorrow there's a, a, a tender going out for trucks. So the person who has, has cleaning services uh, today, tomorrow, <laughs> can have um, um, the truck business um, as well. It's not that it's wrong. It's just that if they are not a mature business as well, or, or yet, um, corporate clients may uh, um, uh, say that we can't use you because um, you you don't specialize, you don't focus. Um, we don't know if you're going to be a risk to us or, or not. Okay. Then the second block is legitimacy is, let's say we take Matar's example of the chickens again, is those clients who are willing to pay those higher prices. Um, he, he has established a place of trust between um, uh, entrepreneur and client. So if they say, Matar said, okay, we have uh, X amount of chickens, they're willing to pay that because they are trusting the quality that they are going to get from him. So trust is very, very um, important. Okay, then there are three forms uh, in entrepreneurship um, of legitimacy. That is, uh, let's say, people. Um, let's say, in, in Matar's case, he is is both the the person plus the services, the products that he's selling, the chickens. Both have legitimacy, and therefore, the business have legitimacy. I'll take my own as an example. I never had a website. Um, for uh, for more than 10 years because it was hacked <laughs> a few times and then I said no. Um, whoever I'm going to work with is going to be word of mouth. Now, no matter whether I didn't add a website for all those time, I had the legitimacy as a subject matter expert in terms of what I, I will do. So people um, didn't really care whether I had a website before 
or not because they know the expertise that, that they would have uh, got uh, from me. I will share with you in the chat, so it's not perfect yet, we're still working on that. I will share there with you um, our website. But please, when you click on, on search, let's say the Institute, the NPO and the podcast, those are still being built and will be done in two weeks. But um, that is, for example, um, we have some clients who said, Chris, we know you, but some of our committees where we need to go get to go and get approvals for the work that you need to do, those people don't know you. So in part of legitimacy is also to be, be visible um, in terms of uh, certain um, uh, social media platforms like LinkedIn, um, as an example. An example. An example. An example. An I just want to see why I'm echoing. Okay. Um, Matar, your hand is up. Yes. <coughs> Legitimacy yes. is related to legality or legated to the, as you said, exactly that the trust of people for getting this product or services. Um, legitimacy is the whole package. So, um, uh, uh, the the legality will form a part of that to say if your business is not um, 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 legal or if I can say it's not uh, um, uh, complying with the, the, the things of the country, then it may impact your legitimacy. But let's say, for example, you get, um, let's say in Egypt, I want to uh, use the example that I think Yusuf has uh, shared last week as well. So let's say you go and get um, uh, somebody's wife who's now making food, but there's no um, a, a business uh, legal business. Now, then the legitimacy in that context will be with that, uh, let's say she starts selling to friends and and mother groups or, or certain groups, so the legitimacy will have a boundary um, around that to say it is only seen as legit within the boundary of that target group that um, where she is the, the person standing for the legitimacy and they know her food and they want to support her. But if, 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 she, if, if that lady now wants to go to the next level, she might not have the legitimacy. Um, so the legality forms a part under the legitimacy. Okay, great. That... great. Yes, okay. yes, very clear now. Okay. So the, these are the next slides. So aren't the I just want to go back quickly in terms of the assignment. So the first one is um, you read the, uh, the UN article. The second thing is you understand the BRI model. Those are the four elements of intention resources. It is this intention, boundary resources and exchange. Then um, we've done the bootstrapping that for, for a slide. Now the legitimacy is the slides 10 to 13. That's what we're quickly going to run through with you, okay? Now, there are three forms of legitimacy that you can then go and um, um, address. The one is people-based leg legitimacy. So in this case, it's like with Matar, um, he ticked the box with his clients of the people-based uh, legitimacy. So he has already, if you look at the people part here, He's already ticked the, the goodwill um, a, a, a part, okay? He's already ticked the public recognition part. It may not be a public recognition like a big um, um, chicken um, um, pr producer, um, but in his, the boundary of, boundary of his client circle, with them, he has ticked the public recognition, but not necessarily with um, clients outside um, or uh, um, customers outside of that uh, uh, circle. Then is product and services recognition as a tick within the boundary of those specific grouping of clients, but it may not have the, um, the product service name recognition outside of that boundary um, um, of, of client focus. 
he may have to tick with a business network membership for that specific boundary um, of, of clients that is supporting him. But if Matar now wants to go to the next level of his business, he will need to have an make an assessment to say, what does I need to get in place um, in terms of enhancing, let's say, public recognition outside the boundary of that circle if he wants to now go and compete in outside the boundary of where he is operating now or where he um, needs to go and, um, and create new business networks um, that can um, um, also widen his um, sales uh, of the chicken sea. Okay, then he might come to a, a point is if he exits or he grows outside his current boundary, he might then say, but I can't do this with while working and with the resources um, that I have now. Then he may, uh, like I had to get resources when we scaled in terms of developing entrepreneurs and got Pilo and Richard and another guy, three, uh, a third guy also on board to say, okay, what do you need now if you want to scale outside I want to say your comfort zone of where you are operating now or have operated um, uh, 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 before. So that is what you're going to look at in your assignment as well. And Matar, you can use your example of the, the chicken farming in your, uh, in your assignment as well. And the others can use any example, whether it's your own or whether it's a friend to have a small business um, as a, an example. So this is what's being seen under the people-based legitimacy of an uh, entrepreneurial business. Any questions or comments on this before I take you to the, the next indicator? Okay. Thank you, Nuran. So then the next indicator <clears throat> is seen as your product-based um, um, legitimacy um, uh, indicator. Okay. So there you will look at, um, you'll see there's a column um, product under table 3.2. You will look at your customer um, uh, assurance, okay? So how does your customers um, put the stamp of approval, of assurance um, on, your, um, on your products? Um, the goal is here yeah, is really to make sure that your customer knows about the details of your products and that they will they are happy with you i just want to put off the one mic thank you um so this is not where they put the stamp on Matar uh, as the person but now they're putting the stamp on Matar's um products it's the chicken and the delivery thereof um so it's the product based one um then it is also uh, the second one is experiential um, support. This is extremely important in terms of what references does Matar have. So, for example, he wants to now go to the next level. Does he have written uh, or written or verbal references that he can use from happy clients? So let's say you want to open a website now, or he wants to to go um, to um, a, a a, a chain of um, retail stores. So I always advise um, to say, as you go on, get your references from clients and ask their permission that you can use it in marketing. In South Africa, it suddenly has become a huge thing if you're going into a tender that you attach, you get a points to say, if you have five or more references, you get on this tender, let's say, 30 points. If you have um, two to five references, then um, uh, in your grading system, you'll get, let's say, two points. If you have no references, basically, you get zero on that category. So what we do is, as we develop entrepreneurs, we ask them now to say, what, what does this mean to you? And then can we use it um, for, for uh, on our website or on our LinkedIn as references? So um, this is just a habit um, because legislation also in certain countries will um, dictate that or not dictate that, but 
um, if you are scaling, people will want to know why would they need to use you? Apart from Matar, you are a fantastic entrepreneur and we trust you. But how would the people that need to make a decision with us know that we can trust your product? Okay, then the, the next one aligns with that. It's the, the customer service, um, your quality standards, your environmental friendliness and your in environmental compliance. Um, that's where this um, uh, full, yeah. Your testimonials, as I've said now, some people will have intellectual uh, property. How do you protect that? Um, if you have things that need to be patented or if you need to register um, intellectual property, what is it that you need to protect? Because otherwise anyone can take either the name of your company or your product recipe or whatever needs to, um, um, to, to happen. And then service visibility. Um, I am not a big boffin on social media, but the people working with our entrepreneurs says that <laughs> uh, TikTok and Instagram are um, one of the, 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 the trenders that we need to go in. So I, st I still need to, okay, I said tick, tick the what talk, but we're going to learn this to, uh, TikTok. So all of you that are in business need to identify how do you take your uh, business, your happy customers, um, now to make it visible for you because people who doesn't know you, but you may put it on social media. They might see that and they'll say, oh, I want to I wanna contact um, um, Matar. We have a function coming up and um, other people are crazy about his chickens. So um, I am def definitely want to contact him to see how can we use his or um, he want to export. Um, but then he needs to have the assurances of certain things in place. Okay, so the first indicator is people, the second one is product. Okay, I'm going to open it for questions after the third one. Okay, the, the third one is organization based leg legitimacy. So, first one is let's use Matar's example is people have put their stamp of approval on him as the entrepreneur to say anything where he's involved i am assured that my delivery is going to be on time and the products are going to be of high quality then the second thing is um uh, as they say the chickens is is his products yes they're happy with a person are they happy with a product now the third one is the, uh, the, the person and the products, let's say Matar and the chicken uh, organi the, that is producing, forms an organization together. Are they happy with the organization? For example, they might be happy with Matar, they might be happy with um, the, 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 uh, the products, the chickens, but they might not be happy with um, some of the, um, the things that is part of the, the organization. For example, so let's say internet presence or um, um, firm, uh, the company um, uh, uh, ownership or the company name. Mata might have a company name that may trigger some, some negative um, things in certain people through their worldviews, but not the same with others. Is the way of how he's putting his chickens might be okay for certain sets. So let's say it is a law, we have the stamp on approval, but other people would say, but you know, we don't really care about that, or the way you're doing with certain things um, is we're not happy. So that will inform how Matar's boundary of growth to say, will he grow more to this side or will he more grow to that side or how will certain things impact his as his business grow uh, if he scales um, some people will like certain things and some people won't like certain uh, certain things so these are what is the organization behind um, a, a matar 
Okay. Also, what comes in here is um, branding. Um, and how you're going to, Matar's going to brand his business um, and how catchy is it going to be to, um, to, to um, fit what the market also needs. Okay, so these are the three indicators you're going to look at the person, the product, and the organization. Let me just go up. <clears throat> Last slide on the organization things that you will look at, Matar will need to look at. I'm using Matar as an example. Is um, the one is media organization visibility, the history of the organization, um, the internet prison, uh, presence. On the previous slide, also this one was the what is the name uh, of the ownership? Is it catchy enough? Um, then uh, uh, media, uh, we already that one is a duplication. So I can see but that comes from the book. Okay. History is also a duplication. Okay. Time commitment. Is it a part time organization? Is it a full time organization? And then um, are the hours of operation convenient to them? Is it a nine to five? Um, but what about those people that only can um, uh, do business after hours? Is it an online business? Is it a remote business? So those are the things that will influence then the organization's um, based legitimacy. Another one that will uh, influence is, so let's say Matar is, a, I'm just using it, so a, a one-man show, and he's sick or he's out of the country. Some people can't get hold of him. That will definitely influence the organization um, legitimacy or what succession planning or what plan B will Matar put in place if he's not available so that the business can run whether he is the in person or not. Okay, these are the, the things that you will just can look at um, when you do your um, assignment as well. Any questions or comment on legitimacy so that we can move on? Nothing. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to. Okay, this is the slide. That is, uh, the next thing that you're going to look is also under um, when you make the right decisions and make ethical uh, decisions in terms of. Uh, so the things that they have uh, listed is how do you handle a crisis? So, for example, um, Matar has explained um, in, co uh, in COVID, Matar when um, certain of the prices, prices include, you stopped for three months and then you came back. That is a typical example of how do you handle a crisis? So this, that wasn't a, person, a, a personal crisis, but it was a, um, does the business need to stop or how do we, how does it uh, bring the business back to life to make it sustainable? The second one is to achieve sustainability is crucial, crucial for any business, whether you're a corporate or whether you're a, a small business. And that brings us to the, the third one is making ethical decisions. Now, I don't know how it works in your countries, but um, what I do pick up um, a few weeks ago, I was traveling a lot. Um, I had to facilitate three weeks um, in different uh, uh, towns or cities uh, for entrepreneurs. And in the one, I remember it was a Thursday afternoon in this small town called, uh, in one of the provinces, Nelspreit, and one of the entrepreneurs sat with me afterwards because we had done a session in terms of problem solving. And one of the, the things that I've asked them is, how do you deal with corruption? And because I also lecture in ethical intelligence, I'm more than welcome to, um, to give you uh, things on that as well. I always ask the question, so how do you deal with corruption? For example, is if somebody say to you, you only can get this business if you give us this amount or a, 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 B, and C. So I was sitting with this gentleman and he explained to me, but in their town, they cannot get business from government. 
um, if they don't give them a brown envelope. That means an envelope full of cash. <laughs> um, so I asked them and said, okay, so are you doing it? And he said, there's no other way that I could get business. So I gave the same question the next week when we were in Johannesburg to another group. And they also said, Krista, I got an SMS from this person in the Department of Public Works. If I want to be on the short list, I need to pay 30,000 trans in. And I asked her, so did you do it? And she said, no, it's against my moral and ethical code. So these are the things that may differ from country to country or from business to business. And that is um, the question, what do you do when you need to decide what is right or wrong? Do you blur the lines for the sake of business or do you live by your ethical and moral code? I want to explain um, an example with you. Um, I quickly want to take you there. I'm going to come back to this. And you see in front of you is making ethical decisions. Yes. Okay, so I want to take you to this uh, example of the ethical intelligence. Okay. So ethical intelligence um, is one of the new trendy things that's coming um, into supply chain or into decision making. In South Africa, I was the only one so far that has um, um, done workshops for government in terms of ethical intelligence. But this comes for those of you who want to read um, is you can go and read some of the things on Bruce, Bruce Winstein. And the five questions that they are teaching you in terms of, of that is to ask you all before you make a decision, will this cause harm to anyone? Will this make things better? Will this respect others? Is it fair? And is it caring? And oops. Can you, if I want to play the video quickly to you, did you hear when I started that? Did you hear turn when I said? Just did try you to it? turn it. Yes, Mpilo coming. Can I just turn it on? Can you hear that? I'm sure, I'm sure. Can you hear that? I just paused. I just want to hear if you hear it before I play the no. video. video. No, no. On the yeah, so stop sharing and reshare again. Okay, but it's uh, uh, linked on my pillow. Is just helping me quickly. It's embedded on the slide. Hmm? Um, that's that one. This one is this one. But that's what I did. I just want to check quickly again. Can you hear this? Can you hear this? Can you hear the video? No. 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 Okay. Okay. So what I will do no. is um, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him Pilo to drop this video on Moodle. This is um, um this is Bruce Winstein. And um, he explains the difference between emotional intelligence and ethical intelligence. And that's linked to the five things. If you need to decide, uh, uh, it's, do I do the, take the right question, a decision, or do I take the wrong moral, moral um, uh, decision? Um, for example, can you see in front of you ethical fading? 
Yes. Okay. So this is also a term, those of you in corporate as well, and who works on ethics in your, your corporates, one of the, the things that we, you can start, um, so I have a whole two-day um, um, uh, workshop uh, on ethical intelligence, but I'm more than willing to, to share it um, with you. So the one thing is, um, there was a case, and just to explain that, sometimes we may decide, yes, this is ethically right for us, and sometimes we must rationalize why it is ethically not wrong. But um, you either are in integrity with your ethics and your moral code, or you are not. But the world we live in um, um, has made it so easy to for ethical fading, so that sometimes you <laughs> take the right decision and sometimes you don't take the right decision and um, you rationalize why it is not wrong. That's called ethical fading. So the, the one th uh, there was this example of um, in the 90s, 70s, they've designed a Fort uh, Pinto. And then the Ford um, managers um, experienced ethical fading, and I'll explain to you why. At the time, they had to take a decision on something, and they didn't see it as ethically uh, 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 an issue, but uh, it became a financial issue for them. Okay, so um, uh, they had to design this car, but... Um, because they have put the money portion over the ethics, um, a lot of clients um, and that you, uh, bought that for, uh, Fort Pinto died. Um, and uh, what they did then is Fort was um, fined um, for at that stage for nine hundred million dollars because of. Um, they were aware of certain uh, something that was not ethically right, but they took it on, as an organization. And to remember, organization are made of people, and people are, are part of teams. And the decision that the people um, took uh, in Fort at this stage is that they would have lost too much money if they do the ethical thing by stopping the production of that car at that stage. Uh, but that resulted in a lot of um, um, uh, people dying because they had ethical fading in their decision making uh, at that stage. And then at the, the end, they had to pay so much money um, when they were caught up out, if I can put it like that, because so many people died and they uh, came back and the, the, the decision that they should have taken to stop um, then and didn't do that is um, lost of lives and they were um, um, fined for if ethical fading. So the one thing that you need to start looking in the work that you're also doing is are you always doing the ethical thing or are you on your life having any uh, um, ethical uh, fading. For example, those that I've said to you, we call it the pen penguin method, is that they won't get any business unless they um, giving a brown envelope with cash to certain people. Now, the sad thing of that is those are people that <laughs> are, are known for ethics on social media, but in their daily uh, as small businesses, they take a decision every day to, um, to to practice ethical fading and to rather rationalize it uh, um, that it's right mm -hmm. instead of doing the right thing. And that is where ethics uh, comes into a big business and small business. But there's a concept called ethical fading um, that you need to start becoming aware of um, and identify um, in your own life, in your businesses, and in your corporate environment. Any questions? I wish I can do a whole workshop for you on ethics um, and morality um, uh, in terms of business, but um, because I'm very passionate about that. Any questions or comments in terms of the ethical part um, of business related to your um, to, to what we were talking about now?
Yes. <coughs> Question. Okay, I hope I can okay. answer it honestly. <laughs> sure, sure. So, uh, as you said that uh, in, in some cases that uh, uh, it is your right and others will stop you from getting your right in the business mm -hmm. unless they take some money or they take a bribe. Mm -hmm. So will it be also it is my right to take this part or to take this whatever thing that I should have it? Is it right to pay for him or to pass it because I'm not harming anyone? Uh, if I answer the five questions, I will not see. I, I see that I'm not harming anyone, but I'm taking my mm -hmm. right. Is this right from ethical point of view? If I'm not harming anyone. Um, in 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 terms of their model of ethical, uh, <laughs> no. But in terms of the question that you need to, um, so in terms of this Bruce, Bruce uh, um, um, I think it's Bruce Winstein. Um, um, yeah, Prince Winston's model is of ethical intelligence. If you only ask a black and white question, the answer is no, that um, may not um, uh, uh, be wrong. However, um, all of us are grew up, whether it is in certain religious, certain philosophies, certain appearance, or um, for to say, what is your code? Because ethics are informed with your moral code. So is your moral code, um, is your moral code influencing, definitely influencing that, but according to your moral code, will, will that be ethical for you or not? In terms of my moral code is I will never, I will rather lose business than doing the, 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 the wrong thing. Um, but it will depend on what is your model code also saying. So it's good to have books like this. But you must remember, this is the first guy in the world that has developed that. So the second uh, person might be you to say, but listen, your model is flawed because of reason A, B and C. And the third person might say to, to you, but your moral, uh, your ethical intelligence model uh, is flawed um, because A, B and C. So that is where ethical fading comes in to say, yes, in terms of this, you're not harming anyone. You want to make things better. You respect others. You're fair and you can't. But is this model of uh, ethical intelligence, is it right or is it, or is it flawed? And most probably each one of uh, us may say, uh, it's flawed for reason A, B, and C that may be different from yours uh, to, to, to mine because we have different moral codes that influence um, our ethical um, uh, in, uh, intelligence. Does that make sense? Yes, sure. The same with spiritual intelligence. So I'm a master trainer in spiritual intelligence. So the same with spiritual intelligence. One model may say this is what needs to happen in terms of a spiritual intelligence in business or spiritual intelligence um, in uh, bringing this in, in, into account. So I've written papers uh, on, on that as well. But coming back to you or Matar or Olezat or, or, or Yusuf, each one of you, those things are influenced by our moral code that will say, no, this is right or this is wrong. And the more <laughs> ethical, just quickly, and the more ethical fading we have over this world, it's no, it's no, it's no wonder this world um, is in such a mess because of if ethical fading of people's moral codes of conduct. And then it's a question, how, how do we change uh, how do we contribute as individuals to re-establish um, a, a strong moral code of what is right and wrong um, in business? And that with this, we can have a whole class over and a whole a dialogue over. But I wanted to plant seeds to say there are models out like ethical intelligence, but it doesn't make it necessarily ethical. Does that help?
Y yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, professor. I yeah. just want to put. Just let me put yeah, off. I was still, oh, oh, I was sorry, sorry. Put... Just say again. Yes. I'm listening. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because um, while you are talking, you you okay. actually pointed out that um, you actually pointed out that it might not really mean uh, the ethical intelligence might not really mean harming uh, or causing harm in the organization, the business. But um, my question is this: If you critically examine what a Western uh, talks about ethical intelligence. He talks mm -hmm. about uh, the, the, the being able to declare the ethical intelligence as to determine how successful you are on your job, how strong your relationships with friends and family and family. Now, I want to find out if your if, if someone comes to the business or in organization and uh, being that they appreciate your, your the level of how you operate your work and each time the customer come to the office they are highly uh, excited they, they feel happy to come to do business with us and now they decided to give us some token uh, as to appreciate us by being kind to them and remember that the number five uh, question uh, ethical question talks about uh, if it is caring and in this case, now we do now, a member of my organization said, no, we are not supposed to collect that appreciation, a cash gift appreciation from a customer who was mm -hmm. pleased on the way we handled his transaction. Ethically, mm -hmm. how, how are you going to advise me on that? Um, so the one thing is, uh, do no harm can also be translated, are you allowed to do that or not? Um, so um, even if you use the words do no harm, but it also means are you allowed to do that or not? So if your organization has a policy of uh, no, you don't receive gifts, you don't do this, you don't do that, and um, you accept that, um, in a way you have uh, harmed the, 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 the ethical um, uh, brand, reputation, um, what the organization, uh, organization stands for. And by accepting that is um, that is ethical fading. We, um, the organization also said you're not allowed to do that, but you do it anyway. Um, and the more people have ethical fading, the more corruption we will have, and the more corruption becomes um, um, or unethical behavior become the acceptable norm. So um, the one thing is, no, you cannot do harm to your organization um, because they explicitly said none of our employees uh, are allowed to do, um, to do that. Okay. I have five I minutes left. <laughs> just, say, just say again, I, I struggle to hear you. Okay, what I'm saying is, won't it serve as a motivation to the employee while on duty? To be working hard. Um, it's not if it's the if it's against the organizational policy, um, you you're not allowed to do that. So whether you see it as a motivation or not, um, you've signed up to that organization and you've signed up for what they want they stand for and what they expect from their employees. So therefore, uh, unless you've got permission um, to, uh, otherwise it will be a contravention of things you have signed for that you will treasure and respect. I just want to quickly, I need to take you through one more thing on that's the, the SDGs, but there's a hand up of Yusuf. Yeah, Professor, I, I, I just wanted to add one uh, one point here. Um, okay. So it's, it's, it's not always uh, uh, black and white. And yes. uh, you are in the business like for a uh, for long time. Um, especially in some uh, Eastern uh, countries, you have to deal with the, uh, uh, some level of uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the uh, like international organization, they have some policies. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, what you cannot do. And you there is like um, 
code of ethical uh, code of like uh, conduct and uh, code of ethics mm -hmm. so you have to follow uh, some uh, policies at uh, sometimes they will give you uh, a limit of the gifts yeah. you can give to the yes. uh, governmental like officials sometimes you have to deal with some invitations like uh, tickets uh, uh, bookings even like sometimes if you uh, I, I was working my, my last job in middle east was uh, a specification manager in one of the like uh, international organizations and mm -hmm. sometimes if you go to get your products like approved you have to uh, invite some officials to visit your factory okay yeah. and they will ask for like okay so we need to visit your factory to get it uh, approved but we need to go to Europe instead of your factory here in the Middle East. So uh, I, I, I'll, I'll try to make it short so you know better than me that sometimes you have to bend the ethics a little bit but to, uh, to prevent like uh, uh, harming your organization. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I will, uh, thank you so much for, for, for that, you too. I will, um, I'm going to look how can we br bring uh, at least a little bit of ethical intelligence in some of the other modules in um, where we can make it so that we do the introduction today and then we can maybe bring it in some of the other modules in also where it is um, uh, very specific. Um, because um, I, I, I don't want to go over time. Um, we have three minutes left, and I just want to take you through uh, quickly through the the um, SDG uh, goals um, because you will need to do that in your um, assignment. Okay, any one of you wants to have it afterwards, chat to me on on ethics, but. Um, Ethics is also a very personal thing, um, but I will uh, try to, to bring in a little bit more on ethical intelligence outside this um, Weinstein's thing in some of the other modules um, as well. Okay, is that okay? So that I can just quickly finish here. Happiness? Happiness? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so in terms of, um, we have looked at here at sustainability, so achieving sustainability. So one of the things that um, has become, it's for me, it's fascinated. I've done the training also in terms of, of that is um, the uh, focus on entrepreneurship and, um, and in corporates on the triple bottom line. And in terms of the triple bottom line of sustainability, it includes your planet, it's the first P, here at the bottom, um, that means your environmental protection. All the things linked to climate change and uh, green procurement will very much uh, fall under the, um, the planet that is uh, linked to your natural resources, your world, your ether, uh, air, um, your energy, and uh, your land use. How responsibly are you and innovatively are you doing that? Then the uh, second B is people. Now, sometimes they also now bring in uh, things into the business management in terms of social capital, um, a link to, um, to, to, to the people part. So um, that is um, how responsibly are you dealing with your, um, um, your, your social variables, which include your community, your education, um, your um, social resources, your health, your well-being, and um, quality of, of life. Uh, of the people that is working in your um, in your organization whether it's corporate or, or not corporate then the third B is the profit part um, is then how do you deal with the bottom line and your, your that means it's your actual whether you make a loss or whether you might make a profit um, and cash flow and this is by bringing together the, 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 the triple bottom line. So if you hear triple bottom line, it refers in sustainability to your people, planet, profit, your, your three Ps. Um, so what are you going to look at? Um, so then the next uh, part, the United Nations really um, identified then 17 goals um, in terms of what needs to be achieved by the year uh, 2030. So, um, both big businesses and entrepreneurship are, are falling um, under this. 
So here are the 17 and I just want to take you through it quickly. And um, so there's the, the one goal is no poverty, zero hunger, good uh, health and well-being, number three. Number four, quality education. Five, uh, gender equality. Six, clean water and um, uh, sanitation. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. Ten um, is to reduce inequalities. Eleven is sustainable cities and communities. Uh, Twelve is responsible consumption, consumption and production. Thirteen is climate action. Fourteen is life below water. Um, Fifteen is life on land. Sixteen is peace, justice and strong institutions. And seventeen is partnerships and goals. So what I've done for you is um, I did a little research. So you guys can use this as a uh, an example in coordination with so this one here has been identified so how can you generate more social economic value through entrepreneurship and these are the um 16 uh two four six seven the 14 that is generally identified that is applicable on um entrepreneurship what you need to do is take this then align that with, let's say, no poverty and hunger here at the bottom is uh, number one of the SDG goals uh, on, the, on this block. Identify then, if you read through, I've, uh, we've attached on Moodle a PDF on a uh, article um, that has been done in late 2022, so it's a very new research article, by the United Nations in terms of the SDG goals on entrepreneurship. So that's why I've said first, let's read the article. I just want to get here. First, read the article. That's the UN article. Then you go through that and then um, bring all the, the elements together and then look at the article and the elements. Identify then a case study, whether my tar takes this one, with um, uh, chickens or whether, um, let's say, Yusuf used his in, um, on his um, corporate or whether Oli uses hers on the, the non-profit or the consultancy business. But each one identify how do you want to use it, whether you want to use it on your corporate or whether you want to use it in terms, uh, that means interpretation entrepreneurship or whether you want to use it actually on a small business let's say entrepreneurship bring these elements together and then stand back and take a bird's view and to say if you can in a way say where they all miss the the the, the, the plot where's the gap mm -hmm. and bring it together in terms of a recommendation for your chosen organization that's the one uh, bottom is make recommendations for them to become sustainable. And then two is advise them on the do's and don'ts on this path towards sustainability. What should they not do and what should they do? You can do it in a table form. You can do it in a PowerPoint form. You can write it there, whatever the system allows you um, to do. But just be creative and bring your view in of what um, you would um, advise your chosen organization to do. Okay, um, it's your approach. Nothing I'm going to see is right or wrong. I'm really going to look at how innovative have you um, uh, uh, approached this uh, individual assignment. Any questions or comments before we close out? Uh, Professor? Yes? Okay, thank you very much. My, not really a uh, question as regards the uh, sustainability, but um, it has to do with the assignment. Uh -huh. um, I, actually, I, I, when I started this semester, I, I was closely engaged with other assignments and um, mm -hmm. 
I actually could not really follow up. I didn't really know, understand the, the first step, but now I can fully. Uh, so when I really go through the module, because I was my I was having a challenge in my system and internet, so I couldn't really understand. But later when I would go through it and I saw the assignment, I've, when I finished, but I couldn't submit because it has only expired. So I was waiting today, uh, if I can have Chris to submit the assignment with one, with this current one. Okay, so what is your actual question? <laughs> What is the question? Do you need more time to finish your assignments? Or what is your question? Yeah, uh, my question yeah. is um, the <laughs> first, the first one, the first one I've not actually submitted. The week one, I actually because I couldn't submit. They said it as timeout, so I couldn't really find how to submit that uh, week one assignment. Uh, okay. So do you need more? Uh, okay. Do you need more time? Yes, yes. Okay, so just quickly for everybody, um, Pico Abulelo, are you online, eh? Yes, uh, yes, okay. Back, so there's two in the group that uh, has asked for more time. There's one that is really very ill. Um, um, she has asked, uh, Ahmed has most, uh, asked for, for more time. So we try to give time for specific people, but the system doesn't allow us. So, um, if if we give more time then uh, the system will open it for everybody so i'm more than happy if we um uh, take the because the system doesn't allow it to only make for certain people so i'm more than happy if you guys want to catch up on assignment one two and this one because this one is going to be a little more work if we make it next sun uh, not next sunday if we give you two weeks to do this will that help then you catch up on assignment one two and then this week to have it till next sunday will that help uh yes perfect yeah. so yes, for me yeah. it's, uh, uh i haven't found your um, powerpoint slides uh, in what's that uh, today i found that's why i'm so sorry for how to send my assignments <laughs> i i didn't have any idea so sorry Please, That's uh, fine. we need more time. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to ask Mpilo to open it then up for um, two weeks. I just need to see to allow you, um, but I can't do more than that because um, otherwise you're going to get behind and, um, um, it's, and the pace is going to pick up. So two weeks from now, then you catch up on your week one, two and three. Is that okay? Yeah, that is better for X. Uh, for X uh, okay, two thank weeks. you very much. Okay, very so much. Um, if you struggle and you can't find something, really send me a message on WhatsApp um, so that if I can't help, then I always refer it to, if it's a system related thing, back to Sarah or to the university. But if it's like, I don't find, let's say this PDF, um, please don't, not the books PDF, I don't have a PDF of the book, but let's say I don't find the slides, then um, I don't want you to struggle and I don't want you to be, but you must be diligent and do your part um, because there's a lot of students in the class that really keep up to date so that's also not fair to them if the others are lagging behind but i want all of you to graduate this semester with a scores okay yes professor um, thank, thank you, you so much. okay thank any, you, um, <laughs> okay I, any other yes yes i have a question quick question on this assignment uh, okay. for week three so what I understood is to read the PDF that you're going to upload. Uh, after reading that, we um, uh, see the content that we uh, learned today. You yes. listed the slides. So based on the titles we have here on the questions, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we advise or the advice we give to an entrepreneur, we write, we write it down yes. uh, in, in whatever format we want and then the uh, submit right yes 
So okay. for example, okay. you take um, uh, Matar's chickens, you first read through the quiz, uh, through the, the, the assignment to say, okay, how, um, um, the, the PDF, the uh, article, to say what of those things would have impacted let's say on SDG, then you put it, put it in the back of your mind. Then you go to number two there, you can uh, print this uh, slide out on the assignment. So, okay, using the Bree model, then you go to slide number three. Okay, so then you will say, okay, um, what elements are there? Then you list, say so the things that we had to consider for uh, Meta's business is the four elements of the Bree, boundaries, resources, intention, and exchange. Then you can write on let's say on intention. What do you what did you need to uh, what did you advise? Or can you advise um, a matter in terms of the the um, the boundary one? What advice on terms of the resources? What is doing differently or what it should do on intention and exchange? Ha! Click tick. Then you go to number three. Then you go to the slide number four to say, okay, what of that in terms of bootstrapping in Matar's business environment or in Siemens um, would you um, uh, recommend um, is very important and why? Tick. Then you go to um, number five to say, okay, what ethical decisions is important for his in industry? What would you recommend to him in terms of doing the right things and let's say, for example, he, uh, um, he don't he, uh, he bribe people that in that industry or in that country is going to uh, backfire and, and harm him. Or why is it important? Tick. Then you go to number six in terms of the SDG goals. Then what you do is you go to the slides. You go to the slides. Or you can do research. Um, you identify in terms of people, profit, planet, which um, of these goals um, is a absolute non-negotiable for the success and sustainability of his business. Then you can do a little table. So let's say you identify five of them. Let's say in this case, you identify whatever ones you want to, then next to it, you will say, why is it important um, uh, um, uh, for him? And then you make a close out um, in terms of just the, the do's and don'ts, um, in terms of, uh, I just want to get to the assignment, in terms of sustainability. And you do it in your own way, your own thinking, your own worldview. Okay. Okay, thank That's, you. Okay, and if you struggle, then obviously I can't do the thinking for you, but if you struggle and you've done homework and you've re done a little research and you still then struggle, then you send me a WhatsApp um, so that I understand what are you struggling with, but don't overcomplicate it. Do we have okay. like a, a similar, similar assignment, a similar one, a similar, simpler one that mm -hmm. is that we can read as an example for us, and then each one can build his own uh, idea. But 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 at least we can read something very similar to what we are we should do. Do you have no. something like that? No, my thought, But what you need to do is physically you should um, really you just um, use let's say Bree model. Then you write the four things down, and then identify what is it that you think. Why is it important um, for entrepreneurship? So don't overcomplicate it. I'm look, not looking for perfection. I'm looking for application. Uh, how would you take these things that's in these slides and apply it? Um, so it's not perfection. It's really just application. Okay. Okay. Don't go for perfection. Um, just be creative and. Um, just use your logic. Okay, don't overcomplicate. I really are looking for what you think, why it's important. It's not about perfection. Okay, you're all happy. Yes, thank you, Professor. 
Okay, but you can contact me at any time when you, even if you want to say, this is what I've done, um, you drop it for me in the WhatsApp so that I can open it there, um, I'm on the right track. Um, wonderful. Okay, I'll see you next Sunday and I'll ask Pilo to uh, open uh, week one, two and three. Um, open that up to for, for two weeks' time to help all of you to catch up. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank Have you. a good day. Okay. All of you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Be blessed. Next week.